<laughs> Tell your, your mother I want to meet her. Life does not get any better than this. The Gangan Billabongs are a vast and dense freshwater ecosystem 100 kilometres inland from the Arnhem Land coast. During the wet season, these paperbark forests become flooded by one slow moving body of water, covering huge amounts of surface area. But during the dry season, this water shrinks back into dozens of billabongs. It's a landscape of leafy pandanus plants, water lilies, and thick paperbark forests. The Dullawungu clan has lived with this billabong system for as long as anyone knows. Their reliance and connection to this land runs deep. It gives them life and holds their spiritual ancestors. The density of wild animals in and around these billabongs is incredible. But there is one animal that Simo and I have got our sights on. Australia's most iconic fish, the barramundi. Barra are both a fresh and saltwater fish. They fight hard, grow big, and eat anything smaller than them that lives or falls into the water. They are an extremely successful fish because of this ability to predate in all conditions. And where you find water in the Northern Territory, you'll find barra. But it's during the cloak of darkness around these billabongs that things really come alive. And that includes its most famous nighttime predator, the barramundi. As what usually happens, uh, the closer you get to a fishing spot, you drive a little bit faster, generally due to anticipation. And it wasn't too much of a sharp turn. I've collected a tree and we've got a mud guard back onto the tire. It's gonna to have to leave it off the, or jack it from the tree there, Simo. Yes! Hold that back for us more. There it is. We are back. <laughs> All right. Take two. We're on our way to find a clearing in the forest to launch our boat because we're going to be sleeping in the boat tonight while on the billabong because night time is the best time to catch barra and it's also a really great way to immerse yourself in this kind of environment. You know, thousands of birds, big crocodiles, buffalo, snakes. You know, it's like being in Jurassic Park. The community elders have got Bundy Amma and Jono to come with us and guide us through this forest because it's so dense and so thick that one wrong turn can get you lost and get you into real trouble. Oh, this gets me so excited. Yep. All right, there's my second cast and a barra. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I don't think we oh. oh. There we go. Oh, beauty. Oh. Beauty. That's our first, that's, our, that's my second cast on this billabong. And that is a thick barra. I mean, we've been told, <laughs> we've been told rumours about this billabong here. This is as deepest, darkest Arnhem land as you can get. And they said if you can get down to this special place and get permission to come into this particular billabong, it's full of fish like this. Incredible. But anyway, but he is a beauty. And he's going to go off. And I'll catch you another day, so. Yeah. Uh, they're big salty, though. Yeah. Here we go. I feel very good about this one. So my lure is basically acting like an injured fish. A normal swimming fish would not behave like that. So the barra's obviously thinking, okay, 
This fish is in trouble. He's an easy meal. I'm going to come up behind him and busca. Now, lures and lures are getting more and more realistic. That scale pattern on top of that lure is incredible. Different angles. However, turn him underneath and he turns into a bit of a terminator. He's got a whole lot of mechanics happening under there, but very natural on top. Oh, it's a big one. You can talk about your mechanics later, mate. I've hooked the Terminator. Mwah. 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 He's another fat, healthy specimen, isn't, isn't he? Isn't that? It's huge. So what this lure is, in, is trying to um, tend to be is a fish that's sort of injured and bouncing on the surface and also perhaps a frog. Good boy. You wait in a bird. Oh wow, there's magpie geese. That's what we'll be hunting tomorrow. Or at least eating. My favourite bush tucker, magpie geese. Sounds like the noise that a clown makes when you squeeze his nose. <laughs> Years of evolution, they've developed that. <laughs> so maybe we better find a place to um, anchor up, I think. It's getting dark. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, up there, I reckon, where the deep stuff is. Something special happens when the sun goes down in a billabong like this. A big increase in animal activity takes place. There's a change in the guard. The animals that operate during the night emerge and the daytime animals shift, find shelter or move elsewhere. Today's Aboriginal people still hold the knowledge that their ancestors have passed down about all the animals in these wetland areas. One of the animals that show themselves during this twilight period is the magpie geese, or gurumachi, as they're known by the Aboriginal people. These birds and their eggs are at the top of the list in terms of bush tucker for the local yungle. And tomorrow, a few local mates of ours had promised us the feed of the gurumachi. Press him on. Tarp on. The tarp on. I'll take anything at this stage. <laughs> Just give the kids some confidence. Now that is a tarp on. Very common freshwater fish. Big barra! Oh. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Big oh. So just gone dark. And I was just casually pulling my popper in and hooked a big barra. Oh. Got a glimpse of him. Oh, there he is. Lovely. Yes. Oh, he's back up. He's checking to see if you. Oh. Aren't he side saddle? Oh, he's a big fish. Yes. Oh my god, that is a big fish. Oh yeah. Whoa. Getting all light on him. Look at right? that. Oh. <laughs> Pop that lure down there. Jeez. He has just been wow. living. He's been living the good life. Look at that. He's been sitting on the lounge for a long time <laughs> eating ice cream. <laughs> Try the girth of this guy. That is probably what's gonna be most impressive about him. Look at that thickness of him. Oh. Anyway, wow. this guy's huge. Wogs. Rock on. <laughs> I love it. So their feeding method is they don't have any teeth, so they don't grip bait. They basically inhale fish. So he'll sneak up from behind a, a mullet, open his gob like that, and inhale litres and litres of water around that bait fish so it just gets sucked in. And the bait goes down the gullet there, and all that water he sucked in goes out his gills. And that's what makes that boof sound. A really um, sophisticated predatory method. He is a big fish. She, it's actually a she at this age, by the size of 70 centimeters. They're all, they're all males until that point. 
and then they turn into females and then they start breeding. So him up one there we more. go. Wait, one more time. Yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Give him a swim here, he's so big. I don't want to keep my hand in here because there's a lot of crocs. And there we go. That's amazing. Simo. Hartney. Hartney and Simo. Turn it on. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm slightly, there's any slight element of anger about me. Hey, because you haven't caught one. That's what it is, because Morgan, actually, I do understand why. Morgan has pulled out four horses, and I've pulled out a tarp on. <laughs> a wide eyed tarp on. Chin up, right. buddy. Yep. It's just so fun because you just don't know. You're just casting out to pitch black, and all you can hear is just your lure just bloop along the surface. You don't know, you can't see anything, it's just it's all audible. And then you hear this big boof, and then your line goes tight, and you can hear jumping out the back. And when you hear that boof, a rush of adrenaline just surges through your veins. It wouldn't be as big a rush as adrenaline as that though. Baked beans on a fried biscuit. Going to comfort Everyone gets their highs in different ways. Gone to comfort food. catches massive barra. I'll have some nice comfort food. <laughs> Here we go. Another quality freshwater billabong barra. Look at the spikes on him. Barramundi's the Aboriginal name for big scales. And you can see why. Really big chrome scales. Tell your, your mother I want to meet her. Oh man, life does not get any better than this. Life does not get any better than this. I wouldn't swap my life for anybody's at the moment. Simpson would. He'd swap, him for, he'd swap it for mine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy, chin up. The scary thing about being out here at night is the amount of crocodile eyes that are so clearly visible with the torch. I'm shining this around, and you can't discern whether they're a four-meter crocodile or a 30-centimeter crocodile. You just see bright orange eyes shining back at you. And scanning around here, I can see the three right, right there. there. Three, four. So there's four. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. They're just everywhere. This whole place is so eerie. It's got bats kicking in the trees. It's got fish splashing everywhere. But we are on a high-sided boat. Our sides are about two foot off the water. And a croc, basically, they're gonna size us up and see the size of this boat. Think we're the apex dominant animal in the area. Or we'll think that Morgs is. And, uh, Leave us alone, hopefully. But uh, such a unique and interesting, but spooky experience. It's not exactly the Hilton, but and it, Hilton doesn't offer views like this. The Hilton doesn't offer beds that are impeded by spear guns at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> We may be out in the middle of Arnhem Land, but we are not animals. We're still having our pancakes. And I didn't understand, I didn't realise that having pancakes means that you're not an animal. That's right, it separates us from the apes. The ability to reason and pancakes. Yeah. Peaches, Simo? Yes, please. That is contemporary. Wow. Contemporary. Interesting. Served on the top of a pot. Vid. That'll do. 
<laughs> you don't hear many of the judges on all the fine cooking shows as their first comment. That'll do. <laughs> Okay, this is the uh, this is the spot we said we we're going to meet him. Dale, a mate of mine from Gupawiak community, a couple of hours down the road, said he was going to come and meet us here today. At this time, roughly, roughly midday-ish. It's now two. Fingers crossed. So we've been waiting a waiting a bit. So we've decided to um, have a flick. Yadi, Dale, Dale. So they're hunting around here most likely. Time is a different concept to uh, a couple of our mates, particularly the uh, indigenous fellas. We, have, we, we go by a different time scale. <laughs> Roughly for us can mean an hour each side of a certain time frame. For them it could be three or four. And I think that they're the ones who have got it right in terms of how to <laughs> handle time. It's really easy uh, to become blasé about your surroundings when you're fishing, especially when you're concentrating on a lure retrieval or a particular type of cast. But at the forefront of our mind the whole time, or maybe Morgz's mind, not quite as much, but definitely my mind, is possible ambush points for crocodile. And this here, that looks like a ripper for a croc. That drops away to uh, maybe a metre and a half. It's quite murky water and a crocodile would love to ambush from there, spring out of the water, grab me and pull me straight back in. So although it looks like we're fishing right on the water's edge, the only time we'll be doing that is when it's shallow in front of us and we can see a decent amount of distance to be confident that there's nothing there. But here, I'm not going to fish there. Uh, we've been trying the bush telephone with uh, with no luck, I'm just about hoarse from yelling across this billabong. We can hear Dale and the boys uh, hunting still up that way, so we're gonna go for a walk around cautiously around the edge of the billabong and see if we can find them. Well, coming around, be careful, don't shoot this way. Can you hear me? Hey. 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 Here he is, the elusive Dale. We've also already got some barramundi, some magpie geese. Hope we're eating that tonight. That's how you get across that little bit, we're worried about that. Yeah, you just walk. <laughs> <laughs> so these. Birds, uh, magpie geese, and that's what was uh, flying overhead last night when we were fishing. And this is what we we're going to hopefully eat tonight. We eat this tonight? Yeah. You yeah. beauty. Yeah. Yep. Can you spear them too? You could, possibly. Well, that's the end of a, a second day here at Gangan, and it's just been mind-blowing how ancient this land feels and how uh, pristine the whole environment is you know but that's just the the special place about northeast arnhem land it's been like this the whole time it's a it's a really unknown jewel of australia and we think the world four days ago we we're out on a pristine sand island 30 k's off the coast and this afternoon we we're listening to the birds next to a uh, incredible little billabong gun gun one is that's the name right. of this billabong basically uh, we're uh, an hour and a half drive from where we were yesterday, maybe two and a half from Nullumboy. I can't wait to um, sit down, eat this magpie geese, goose, and um, yeah, get ready for the next leg of our trip. Another little bonus is the boys this afternoon um, hunted a kangaroo. I mean, that may look pretty brutal, but that is really lovely tasting meat. Straight on the fire? Um, yeah. 
just then throw them on the fire and then, then pluck we'll, them? Yep, we'll pluck them. In the coals? Wait till the coals settle down, is that how we do it, or straight yeah. on fire? Yeah, oh, these ones can go on fire. Straight on fire? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I put them on now? Yeah, sure. Just straight on top? Yep. Fried chicken. Pluck. So you burn the... Uh, um, fur off. Burn the fur off and then pluck it. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. It takes a while to do this. Oh, that's right, we've got to tell. I'm in a hurry. Boingy, boingy. Just got that right in front of camp. This is fresh fish. Get his guts out. It's not a uh, not a pretty procedure. Let me put him on. And that is called fresh fish. Is it underwater? Yo boys, can we get some nata? Not every day you get to uh, eat your national emblem. <laughs> Rum oh. area. Look at that. Where are you? Oh. Ooh. That's amazing. That is amazing. Wow. I'm sleeping in the boat tonight. Simbo's going to be sleeping in the back of the tray because the amount of crocodiles we've seen and water buffalo we've seen, we are not keen on sleeping on the ground anywhere close to these billabongs. So, two nights sleeping in the boat. First night was on the water, second night's on land. We'll see you in the salt water. If the magpie geese don't take revenge on us tonight. <laughs>